السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته <تصفيق> بسم الله الذي لا إله سواه والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا محمد رسول الله وآله وأصحابه ومن والاه ذهب الظمأ وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله اسمك اللهم صمنا ولا رزقك أفطرنا فاغفر لنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا وما أسررنا وما أعلنا وما أنت أعلم به منا أنت المقدم والمؤخر لا إله إلا أنت اللهم افتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك والله please open the hearing channels of our hearts to your ذكر اللهم وفقنا لصيام شهر رمضان وقيامه إيمانا واحتسابا يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين And in this context of the blessed noble month of Ramadan for so, so many blessings from the divine favor and grace are bestowed upon us during this month In that context we are speaking these days about the concept of Stewardship, trusteeship, vice-chairancy, or khilafa for God on earth by the human beings. And in that context, the last point we're discussing is to seek help and support uh, for ourselves in navigating in this life through sabr and salah, through patience and salah. We learn to be patient without patience. We are going to be miserable in this life. This life comes with challenges. Challenges internal and challenges external. And sabr is necessary for the heart to be in the right orientation. And with that, to seek support and to seek strength in salah, in prayers. And that's what we're talking about. As Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ And Allah says, يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ As Allah Azza wa Jal says. And in that context we're speaking of khushu' in general and khushu' in salah in particular. And we have learned that khushu' in salah depends on khushu' outside of salah. We are in salah but we are outside of salah. Our aim is to be always in khushu' all the time in salah and outside of salah bi-idhnillahi ta'ala and to help us do that as we said we must strive to be in khushu'a natakhashya hatta nasira min al-khashi'in we must strive to be in khushu'a to focus and to be still inside in order that we develop the character of khushu'a in our lives as well and in that context to help us we're speaking of some of the beautiful interdimensional spiritual aspects and meanings of Salah. And so we spoke of what standing in Salah means, what saying Allahu Akbar means, what being in Ruku'a means, what being in Sujood means. All of those, if we remember them and we keep them in mind and we aspire for this Khushu'a with that, Will, it will be, inshallah ta'ala, possible for us to strive in khushu'a, to be in khushu'a, inshallah ta'ala. And with that, as you mentioned, part of that khushu'a in salah is um, learn never to be in haste in salah. Never to be in haste in salah, that is in a hurry in salah, whether the imam or the ma'moom. Whether the Imam or the Ma'moom. And some Ma'moom, they look for special Imams. The one who is fastest in Salah, they like that. And that's nafs. That's simply an ego. That's simply low base nafs. And that's an indication that one like that is not interested in being in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That one like that means is yet to taste any degree of what it means to be in salah in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the contrary, we should learn to be 
in our salah, patient in our salah, and not in a hurry in our salah. And remember that statement that I and you should always remember if our nafs attempts to uh, drag us into this hastiness. And what is that statement? That hadith. When we are in haste in salah, like when we are looking at something else in salah, or in haste in salah, where to, my servants, somewhere better than me? Remember that. So if I am in a hurry in salah, where to? And I'm in a hurry to finish to go where? Okay, let it be. I know. Is there anywhere better than Allah? La ilaha illallah. Is there anywhere like Allah, let alone better than Allah Azza wa It helps me and you develop khushwa, isn't it? If we know this and we internalize it and we are serious about our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we remember this, subhanAllah, this call from Allah Azza wa as some texts teach us, uh, it, it would make the person very afraid, very humble, very concerned. And I think... And there is an energy, spiritual energy that says, No, no, Ya Rab, with you it is better. With you it is better. Certainly. And about that haste in salah, when we say, As-salamu alaykum, nasta'ajil yudhahabi haythu nuridu min umuri dunya Then we are in a hurry to go where matters of dunya call upon us. In a hurry. People in a hurry to leave. Nowadays, we, again, with these things that I'm mentioning so often now, these supercomputers, the iPhones that we people have and so on, soon as say, Salaamu Alaikum, the first thing they do, get that out. Start looking at it, start receiving texts, reading messages, sending texts. It's, that's isti'jal. That's another form of being hasty and in a hurry to leave the presence of Allah Azza wa by the way, if I were ever in the presence of Allah, I felt it, I will never feel in a hurry to leave. هذا من ذوق الصلاة من ذاق لذة ليس لذة الصلاة من ذاق لذة من الصلاة ليس لذة الصلاة كلها من ذاق لذة من الصلاة لم يستعجل أن يخرج من الصلاة إلى غير الله The person who tasted anything of the sweetness of salah will never be in a hurry to leave quickly in salah or after salah. And that's why Rasulullah taught us after salah to stay in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Salah is the, the very special dhikr of Allah. And after, after that, that heavy dhikr should be, we should leave from that gradually. Not Abruptly. Gradually is by, by being in dhikr, but not in salah. Salah is a lot, many things. Salah has dhikr and more. So when we finish salah, we should be staying there, subhanAllah, uh, digesting the, whatever the experience we developed in salah. Through dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that dhikr of Allah Azza wa itself should not be in haste. Again, and as some of us, please allow me, done this before, after salah and dhikr of Allah Azza wa and they are looking right and left, and subhanAllah, 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 and they feel, and, they, and it's not once or twice. All his or her life is like that. هذا لا ينبغي. We have to learn. Adults shouldn't do that. Let alone يعني, educated adults. Let alone educated Muslim adults. Let, edu- let alone you know, educated Muslim Allah seeking adults. Let alone Allah seeking loving adults. How could you, how could you do that? And that's shaitan. And that's shaitan. Because again, in a hurry for where? To go where? Uh, what's the, what is it going to do to be in, to, 
سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الله اكبر وات از ات؟ اتس نوت اباوت جاست سيين ات سيين ات از امبورتنت بات اي هاف تو سي ات ان سوتش ا واي ذات فيرست اوف اول ذات ات از ريسبكتبل از ات ريسبكتبل تو سبيك فيري فيري فاست تو سام وان يو ريسبكت؟ لا نمبر وان اتس نوت ريسبكتبل اتس نوت ديجنيفاين It's not good. It's not spiritual for sure. And second, when I do that, I perhaps will never get to the point where my heart enjoys dhikr. I will never know what it means to really enjoy dhikr of Allah Azza wa In other words, I will never perhaps benefit from the fruits of true dhikr of Allah Azza wa This is all forms of in a hurry to leave. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught in hadith. And that's a hadith I think related by Imam Muslim and others or others. But it is a well known authoritative hadith. But he was teaching the companions after they finished salah to, say, to stay in dhikr. And he taught them some dhikr sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's a lot. to say this much and this much and this much after salah and he says and the person who is consistent with that has will have so many rewards and he enumerated some of those rewards and then he said and rare are those who are consistent with that wa qalilun man yuhafidu alayhi aw man yaf'alu aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wasallam then they asked at the end Why, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after that you mentioned that few are those who, who do that and are consistent with that. Are you all with me? So look at yourselves, look at each other, each person at his own self. He answered, that happens because once they say, Assalamu alaikum, assuming they even focused in salah, if you focus in salah, assume we did, hopefully, then after salah, He says, Allah, he said, that happens because once they leave salah, shaitan comes back and reminds them of matters they need to do. وَيُذَكِّرُهُ يَأْتِ الشَّيْطَانُ وَيُذَكِّرُهُ حَاجَتَهُ Of course, shaitan is not, going to, is not going to come in a physical picture. He says, I'm shaitan, I'm telling you, yeah, this is important. The very thought that crosses my mind or my feelings about leaving in a hurry because I have something important to do, that's shaitan. It's not about something haram or something. No, this is something I need to do. But again, when you are in salah and in dhikr, is there anything like that? So he says shaitan comes, reminds the person of his or her need. And therefore the person, the person hastens and goes and does not do that liquor. And this is a rule. The exception is if I am truly in a case of necessity and in a case of true, yeah, any, uh, case of being in an emergency or something urgent for me to have to leave, a person like that, first of all, will find it yeah, any burdensome and undesirable to do that, to leave. First of all, this is sign number one. If when you want to leave because of an important matter, you don't feel any remorse, any grief of leaving the majlis of dhikr, then there is something wrong with you or with me. We're like that. Number one. That's a sign that it is sincere and genuine. And then if it is sincere and genuine, with that feeling, I can go, and while I go, I am still in, the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jalla. I walk and I finish my dhikr. I drive, I finish my dhikr. That's because my heart is in dhikr. But if my heart is somewhere as well, I can just wait for any reason to leave. And that's a sign about learning, to learn about ourselves, that we do not have that relationship as it should be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's obviously ijal. Well, ajala too, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches mina, ash-shaytan, at-tu'da tu mina al-iman, wal-ajala tu mina al-shaytan. 
to be in a hurry in things, especially things like these in general, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's from shaitan. To be composed, to be composed in dealing with issues, to in the way we speak, in the way we behave, in the way we act, in the way we react, in the way we pray, in the way we perform dhikr, to be in tu'da, in that composure, that's a sign of iman, he said. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the opposite is a sign of the influence of shaitan. Part of that, my dear brothers and sisters, and the importance of salah and khushu and salah, for salah is, is the most, first, most important practical action we do after after shahada thank you after la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah the first most pillar important action we do is salah not business not teaching see not cooking not managing not administering which are all halal but none of that is as important as Salah when it is time for Salah or time for Mikr of Allah Azza wa That's why he tells us Allah Azza wa Jal and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his Sunnah. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us that one of the indicators or the signs that a person is a Munafiq. Munafiq? Munafiq? Everybody knows a Munafiq? That's the worst creature on earth. Where is Dana? A kafir. And a munafiq prays. And a munafiq performs salah. Because he or she says, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. His or her qalb, his or her heart is something else. Of the external signs that a person is a munafiq, wal'iyad billah, of of the external signs that the person is a munafiq is what? When he or she is in salah, he or she is lazy. Not passionate. Not enthusiastic about it. Not forward coming. Not delighted and pleased at long that. But instead, lazy and bored. A person who comes to Salah and is lazy and bored. That's a sign of a munafiq. A person, again, we're speaking of dhikr, a person who doesn't want to be in dhikr and who is in dhikr sometimes, infrequently, is one of the signs of a munafiq. Many of you know that? Do you know that? Well, it is in the Quran. Allah speaks about them in the Quran and says, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا وَرَاؤُونَ النَّاسَ وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا He says that, I told you. This is the ayah. It is in which surah, who knows? Any half of here? Yes, there are. Surprise. <coughs> Surah Al-Nisa of the characteristics of Munafiq you find them in Surah Al-Tawbah you find them in Surah Al-Nisa you find them in Surah Al-Baqarah many characteristics are spread over the Quran about for example the Munafiq may Allah forgive us may Allah guard our hearts you know sometimes Alhamdulillah we might not be Yarbi may we never be of a Munafiq but we might sometimes neglectfully neglectfully develop characteristics of a munafiq like being lazy in salah being bored in salah being infrequent in dhikr and not focused in dhikr sometimes some muslims also deliberately what do they do lie lie and what did rasulullah teach us about lying it is a characteristic of a munafiq. Lying is a characteristic of a munafiq. 
So every time a person lies as a Muslim, that person has a characteristic of a munafiq. Allah Rasulullah taught us that a munafiq breaks promises, does not deliver promises, and breaks oaths and pledges and does not fulfill them. And that the munafiq also of his characteristics is that he is treacherous, he is untrustworthy, entrusted and does not deliver the trust. When at any time a Muslim who prays, who fasts, does any of these things, Rasulullah says, such a Muslim has the characters of a munafiq. Most despised by Allah Azza wa Jal. We come back to what we were talking about, about salah. And that to be in a hurry in salah, to be lazy in salah, to be bored in salah, and not enthusiastic, and not passionate about it, and not desirous, is a sign of a munafiq. And if I know that in myself, I should turn to Allah in a moment alone and raise my hands sincerely and devoutly and implore Allah for forgiveness and implore Allah and cry that He changes subhanahu wa ta'ala my condition, my heart. And if we have let ourselves be like that for years, Ya Latif, then it becomes an addiction. Until if we see someone in Salah focused, we find it very strange. If we see someone in his dhikr very serious, we find it unusual. It's not the standard. You know, we should be doing something else. In qalabatil umur, virtue becomes vice and vice becomes virtue. By the way, that will happen as Rasulullah says that before the hour comes in the later times, these things will happen. Virtue will be seen as vice and vice will be seen as virtue. Those who are promiscuous, cheaters, adulterers, liars, drinkers, etc. are looked at favorably. Those who are chaste, compassionate, benevolent, humble, hayy, prayerful, are looked at as unfavorably and dissatisfactorily. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us preserve the norms of the divine under the different trying circumstances. Under the different trying circumstances. One of the surahs we recited when we finished from Surah Al-A'raf, I want to link to that. And then remember we're speaking about the call of, of Allah to Bani Adam and the Khilafah. And later on in this context he says, Ya Bani Adam, La yaftinan lakum shaytan Kama akhraja abawaykum min al-jannah O children of Adam, in other words, don't allow shaitan to seduce you, to delude you, to drag you into affliction, into tribulation, into uh, fitna, into conditions in which you are not any more sure of what you do. Don't allow shaitan to do that to you as he did kama. As he did to both your parents and thus caused them to leave Jannah. Don't let him do that to you. I'm giving you another chance. I'm giving you another chance to come back home, in other words, to Jannah, to paradise. But remember, first of all, you left paradise. You left Jannah, that is our parents, left Jannah because of what? Because of disobedience, of obeying shaitan. 
He says, don't let him do that to you so that you would never come back home. And when you come back, you come back to where? No, don't let them do that to you because if you don't come back home, where will you come back? To hell. والعياذ بالله كما أخرج أبويكم من الجنة We'll continue inshallah ta'ala read the last tomorrow from this point here inshallah so that we are on guard against shaitan by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but remember what we have so far covered about some aspects of being a representative of Allah on earth a khalifa of Allah on earth all what we have said please remember that and implore Allah for you and for me to internalize that and to practice that and the last of which we mentioned was the last of which we mentioned was yes thank you but before that practically speaking salah salah and khushu and salah and khushu and salah salata salata وَمَا مَلْكَتْ إِيمَانُكُمْ إِلَا تَسْنُوتْ Be like a munashiq. May Allah help us so that our lives are always in the masjid, outside the masjid, at home, at work, in the gym, in the street, all in a state of khushu'a with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمَّ وَسَلِّمْ وَبَارِكْ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مَوْلَانَا مُحَمَّدٍ الْفَاتِحِ لِمَا أُغْلِقْ وَالْخَاتِمِ لِمَا سَبَقْ وعلن الحق بالحق ناصر بالحق بالحق والدامغ لجيشات الأباطيل وعلى آله الطاهرين وأصحاب الميامين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته